Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to St. Gabriel's Children's Liturgy. I'm so glad you've joined us today. I'm so excited about this Sunday because it's the baptism of our Lord, and we get to celebrate that day. And in doing so, I want you to celebrate your baptism because it was such a special day. Do you remember it? You probably don't. You were a tiny little baby, maybe? Or maybe you were a big kid and you were getting baptized. No matter what, I'm going to tell you my homework first. I want you tonight to light a candle. Maybe it's your baptismal candle if you still have it. But if not, light a candle. I'll make, you, make your parents light that candle. Put it on your dining room table or your kitchen table, wherever you're eating dinner tonight. And I want you to talk about everybody's baptism in your house. What were you wearing? What was your mom and dad wearing? Who were your godparents? <gasps> Who came to your baptism? Did you have a party? And what happened when you were baptized? Did you scream? Did you cry? Did you sleep? It'll be so much fun talking about that wonderfully special day. So while we're thinking about you and your baptism, we're going to go back and talk about the gospel. And who baptized Jesus? Who baptized him? Everybody gets baptized. Jesus did too. And who was it? Anybody know? Don't look at your parents and say, mom, who was it? No, 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 no. Think. Don't Google it. Somebody I talked about and the news, the news lady was on a couple weeks ago and she mentioned it. Who was it? You're right. John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the lucky guy who got to baptize Jesus. Wouldn't that be crazy to get to baptize Jesus? Well, he did. And he was at a river. And could you imagine being there? Pretend you had a blanket and a picnic and you were sitting right there next to Jesus while he was being baptized. So I think before we go any further, let's read the gospel. We'll think about it. We'll dream about it. And then we'll try to see how it relates to our baptism, right? All right, everybody, let's begin with our little blessing, I think about you, I speak about you, and I keep you in my heart. All right, the gospel was written by Matthew. Matthew. Ready? Jesus came from Galilee to the banks of the River Jordan to be baptized by John the Baptist. John was surprised. He was surprised by this and said, surely, surely this is wrong. Surely you should be baptizing me, Jesus answered. We will do things this way, for it is right to follow my father's plans. Remember, his father's God. Reluctantly, John agreed, and Jesus was baptized in the river. As he stood up in the water, the clouds parted, and the Holy Spirit appeared as a dove and settled on Jesus. Then a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love very, very much. The gospel of the Lord. And you say, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Boys and girls, could you imagine? Now, do you think a dove appeared on your baptismal day? I doubt it because you were in a church, right? But the Holy Spirit was right there and you were filled with the Holy Spirit. Your parents cared enough about you to make sure you were at church being baptized. And do you know what father did? This is amazing. Three times he poured water over your head. So he took you as a little tiny baby and he held you. Your godparents probably held you unless you were screaming, maybe your mommy had to hold you. But usually it's your godparents that hold you. And the priest pours water over your head three times. I didn't know that. That pouring of the water says, 
You are mine. You are a child of God. You are a child of Jesus. And you are filled with the Holy Spirit. After you are washed three times with the water pouring over your head, you were anointed with, who knows? Anybody have an idea? Oil, holy oil. And it's called chrism. And it's a sign that God's spirit is making this person special. He's making you one of God's family who will share everlasting life with God. Now, the godparents are also asked a few questions. And they're, will you take care of this child? Will you make sure that that little head and that little mind will always put Jesus first? will always think about others and the godparents have to answer yes we will take care of of this baby that we were so chosen boys and girls you wore a special outfit you wore a white dress even if you were a boy it's a long white gown if mom has that handy, take a look at it. It would be really fun to see how tiny you were, to see you fit in that little outfit. And that white was a symbol of being pure because you were so pure when you were first born. Think, you couldn't have even said, no, mommy, you couldn't have done anything to make mom unhappy. But guess what? No matter what we do, when we make someone unhappy, we don't listen to our mom and dad. When we don't do something, we aren't thinking. And guess what? Jesus says, no matter what, I love you. No matter what, your parents love you. But let's stop and go back to that special day and think about your heart. Think about it and to say, okay, Jesus gave me a heart. Jesus gave me a mind. And sometimes when I do something that I'm not supposed to do, I have to say, oh, I'm sorry. And I don't know what made me do that. So you think when you do something this week or next week or anytime, stop and think about that baptism day where Jesus said, you are one of mine. And if we know we can follow in Jesus' footsteps, we know we can say we're sorry. Today, thank your parents. Thank your parents for baptizing you. Thank you, parents, every Sunday for letting you watch our TV show, for taking you to Mass, because you know what? Some kids don't get to go to church. So you be sure to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And ask, what can I do in my life to let others know that they are important to me and to Jesus? And I bet you will hear some great answers. As we close, I want everybody to just close their eyes and listen. There was a time in your life when you were made a child of God. When you were baptized, Jesus sent his Holy Spirit to you and you became God's child. When this happened, God was very happy. Baptism helps us to continue to live in ways that we are pleasing to God. I want you to think over and over and over every night when you go to bed, what are the things that I could do tomorrow that are pleasing to God? Boys and girls, see you next Sunday. Have a great week and remember to put Jesus first.